Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucky here. And today we're going to go over 10 more things that Starfield doesn't tell you. These are things that are going to be incredibly handy to know. They're going to be great quality of life, great tips, tricks, secrets, all that good stuff that just makes playing the game a lot more fun. Some of which you're unlikely to discover on your own. So let's begin. The first thing is photos that you take with your scanner will end up being used as your loading screen. So if you open up your scanner, go into photo mode and take a picture. There we go. Now that we've taken that photo, when we change zones or go through random load screens, it's going to occasionally pull the picture that we just took and use it as a loading screen. One of the cool things you can do is go into Photoshop or any photo editing program. You can swap that picture out, you can modify it, and it will use your newly modified picture as the load screen instead of the one that you took. So if you want some custom load screens, but you don't want to have to download a mod to do it, that's one way to achieve that. Okay, the next thing that the game doesn't tell you is that if you go ahead and get 100% of your planet surveyed. Right now I'm 55%. I've got two out of seven fauna, one out of seven flora, and five out of eight resources on this planet discovered. If I go ahead and fill that out and get it to 100% surveyed, my outpost here will have a higher production rate. So if you're going to put an outpost on a planet, be sure to go ahead and fully survey that planet so that you're getting your maximum yields from it. And remember, if you're having a hard time finding some of the fauna, then make sure that you go to an area on the planet that is near water, because a lot of times the last fauna that you're looking for is going to be in the water. So go ahead and land right on the edge of the water and run towards the water and scan the creatures in the water. I guess that's also a good time to mention that you don't actually have to scan creatures. You don't actually have to scan plants. You can simply collect them and that counts as scanning them and creatures. You can simply kill them and that counts as scanning them. If you've started the process of collecting surveys so that you can turn them into Vladimir for cash, then gas giants are going to be your friend. A simple scan of the gas giant just like this will give you a fully surveyed planet because you can't land on it to go collect plants and animals and things like that. So simply scanning it from your spaceship credits you for having fully surveyed the planet that's going to give you a survey that you can then sell to vladimir and you can do that with every single gas giant in the game so it's a great way to get a chunk of xp and a chunk of cash early and often in order to find vladimir to sell your surveys you're going to go to the i this is in the alpha centauri system and you're going to talk to vladimir there if you don't immediately see the option to sell your surveys go ahead and exhaust all your dialogue options with him while you're there and then eventually he'll say that that he is willing to buy your surveys from you. Anytime you collect a few surveys, just come on back here and sell them to him. He pays the best price out of anybody that buys the surveys. But before we continue, let me tell you about an exciting new game you should definitely check out. If you're craving something relaxing to play, AFK Journey is the perfect blend of adventure and story that won't make you press 100 buttons per second. You can freely traverse the entire world map, encounter fellow players, meet new heroes, and experience a vivid new world. If you've enjoyed AFK before, you'll be happy to hear that you can still accumulate materials and equipment in the AFK arena. Create and train a team of five heroes for your adventures, and all other heroes will share the same levels and equipment, allowing you to have powerful heroes enter the battle without the need for further training. AFK Journey elevates combat strategy with factors like hero combinations and terrain changes, allowing players to outsmart enemies and bosses. From the Oblivion Valley with its quiet plains and valley forests, to the village of Ryan where the tranquil wheat fields and simple villagers reside, players will explore unique but intricately linked maps, place apples, or or adjust the distance and angle of light beams by pushing pillars to discover hidden treasure chests. AFK Journey is filled with puzzles for you to solve. The new map has infinite zoom, allowing you to have complete knowledge of monster locations, treasure maps, and teleport positions. Changing weather, scattered treasures, and small characters with big stories will combine to create an epic journey for you as you uncover the secrets throughout the map. So download AFK Journey now. It's fun, it's relaxing, it's free, so you've got nothing to lose. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of AFK Journey's casual open world. World. AFK Journey allows players to explore vast mysteries of uncharted lands while unveiling new stories. Familiar AFK heroes will accompany you, such as the mighty lion warrior god Brutus and the clever money-loving merchant Rowan. You'll also form bonds with new heroes like the humorous Robin Swordsman, Verily, and his sister, Hellmoon Star Fae. Embark on new adventures with these heroes, each of whom possess exceptional skills. Upon your arrival, you'll find yourself in the middle of a long-standing conflict that persists between the Wilder, the Lightbearer, the Mauler, and the Graveborn. AFK Journey will continue the story from previous entries as you, the Inheritor, embark on an adventure along the roads of Isomia. Along the way, you'll experience tales of gallant thieves, rescue oppressed and humble villages, and 
forge bonds with the Wilders to aid their tribes in times of trouble. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the video and don't forget to give AFK Journey a try using the link in the description below. All right, this next one is a two-parter. There's two really cool things that you can do inside of the ship builder. One of the things you can do is you can double click to select every single piece of the ship. This is gonna be really great for changing the color of the entire ship all at once rather than one piece at a time. So you can hit your ship color button. And then from here, you can change the entire ship all at once if you wanted to change your ship to red, black, white, whatever you wanna do. The other great thing that you can do with double click is you can find items that are disconnected from your ship if you ever build your ship and you can't find which piece is somehow detached which sometimes happens you'll have a piece you're looking at it and you're getting this error down here when you check the errors it says ship has an unattached module and you know sometimes it can be really hard to tell which piece is not attached and so you can just double click and doing this will turn everything red that is attached to what you double clicked on and as we can see right here this piece didn't turn red so we can grab it slap it on there and now the error is gone and when we double click it turns red as well so everything is now attached this one was really cool to me just because I love to see stuff like this in video games and I wish we saw it a lot more. And that is that Starfield has a diegetic ammo counter on every single weapon. So you look at this one down there, it says this one has zero ammo and it does. And if we look at this weapon here, we aim down the sight, you can see that it says that we have five ammo. Now four, three, two. We look at the pistol, same thing, zero. We reload and now there are six bullets in there. We go to the shotgun, same thing here. We can fire this bad boy off and you can see the diegetic counter whittling away, letting us know that we are running out of ammo there and we had to reload. We've got one in there. Same thing for this weapon here. There's only one little bar because we have one bullet left. We refill this or we reload this here and now you can see all the lights are on and we can start firing it away and those start counting down there. So just something that I thought was really cool that they put these diegetic ammo counters in there. I love seeing diegetic stuff displayed in game. I loved it in Dead Space. You could see your health on your character. I would love to see more diegetic displays in these kinds of games. Uh, maybe get a mod in this game so I could see my health in game, you know, with some kind of diegetic display. That would be fantastic. Or maybe I'm just being a nerd. I don't know. Do you like diegetic displays? Let me know down in the comments below. Before we continue, I just wanted to thank you for watching the video. And if you're enjoying, be sure to like and subscribe for more RPG content. Thanks. Let's get back to it. Okay, this next one is a great way to make money early. It's very easy. You just got to be a little bit careful. Make sure to save before you do it because there is a chance that you do get caught. So you come in here into the neon security and you head straight to the back and in the back there's going to be an unlocked contraband cache now as you can see here it says that there's three different mech components and then six different antiquities i usually come up to this and find about 10 different items in here that can be sold and as you probably know contraband sells incredibly well so what you can do is be careful you know kind of sneak around and then steal all of it for yourself as you notice it was very easy to get away with that we we really didn't do much to prevent them from seeing us. They're not really paying a lot of attention. And then after you've stolen that, the hardest part about offloading contraband is usually that you have to fly to a trade authority somewhere and find someone that will buy it from you. Well, we're already on Neon, so we don't have to fly anywhere. We can simply run over to the trade authority. So we just run over to the trade authority, talk to the guy, say, hey, let's do some business. And then we tell him we want to sell. We go to all and we look for our contraband that we just picked up. So there that is. It's going to be selling for 1,430 a piece some good money right there that's 8600 nice man and we scroll down find the rest of it right here and it looks like he doesn't have enough to sell it to us i'm gonna go ahead and just give it to him because i don't want to deal with it right now and boom there we go we just made something like 11,000 credits in just a matter of a few seconds that's something that you can do if you haven't done it yet be sure to run over and make that easy money the next tip is a pretty interesting one as well you may be familiar with this from previous titles but one of the things that you can do in this game is <laughs> Those eyes, though. <laughs> One of these. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Wait, why are they all looking at me? Uh, one of the things that you can do is you can lose your bounty without having to go to a bounty board. And by that, I mean, if you kill everybody that saw you commit the crime that gave you the bounty, then you lose the bounty. Now, this would be a really tough area to do that in because so many people would see and so many people would start running when they did see you commit the crime. However, if you're in a room with just a few people or just a handful of people, you know, and you commit that crime and you want to lose the bounty, you can go ahead and kill all of the people in that room and the game will go ahead and act like nothing ever happened so long as you've killed everybody that was a witness. The next hidden feature is that when you wait, there's two different types of time. There's the local time and then there's universal time. And the universal time is oftentimes going to be the one that matters. So if you're trying to wait 24 hours, you're going to want to wait 24 hours universal time and so on. So just be aware of the fact that the local time and the universal time are not necessarily going to coincide. Sometimes local hours are going to move a lot faster than the universal and vice versa. In this case, local hours are a bit slower and universal is a bit faster. So when you start sliding that around, just go ahead and make sure that you're keeping in mind that those two are different and you may have to go higher or lower depending on which time passage you're trying to achieve. All right, the next one has to do with resources on planets and knowing what's available and what's easy to find and what's difficult to find on that planet. So if you look at a planet like this one here, it's going to list the resources and it's going to list them in order of how common they are, left being the most common and the right being the least common. So if you're looking for water or lead, this would be a fantastic planet to come because these are incredibly common on this planet. But it does also feature some rare resources like ionic liquids. So you can see there it's got one one diamond, one diamond, and then three diamonds, signifying that this is an incredibly rare material. It goes from one to three diamonds, three being the most rare. So some nice rare material on that planet. And hopefully that information helps you pick a planet when you are trying to decide where to go and set up an outpost for a certain resource. You're going to want to pick one that has an abundant source of the resource that you're looking for. All right, this next one has to do with ladders on your ship. So ships have ladders and you can use them. And I see a lot of people complaining about the inconvenience of the ladders, specifically how long it takes you to travel down and up them. And this can be especially annoying if you've got a companion following you around and you go to go up the ladder, but then they're coming down the ladder and all of that stuff. And it just, you know, they can get kind of in the way. This is just a little bit of a reminder that you don't have to use the ladders in this game. You can just use your jetpack and climb or fly up and it's going to save you a lot of time. You know, here's the animation. If we walk up the ladder much slower, much longer, much more painful. And there we go. Holy cow. That's a lot longer. Yeah. Or you could just do this. There you go. So ignore the ladders. <laughs> you don't need them. You've got a jetpack. OK, the next hidden feature we'll talk about is going to have to do with stealth. This one's a little more common sense, but, you know, we don't always expect games to work in a common sense way. And I think that's why a lot of people miss this one. And this has to do with stealth. So when stealthing, you know, if you crouch and you stealth and you're hiding, you are a lot more stealth if you are not wearing your spacesuit. So what you would want to do is you would want to take off your spacesuit. Now you're just wearing something like this. You're going to be a lot more stealth. It's going to be a lot easier to sneak around enemies behind enemies. Of course, you can't do this if you're in an atmosphere where you can't breathe. So it is going to have limited availability for this feature, but it does help a lot. Also, if you're trying to be stealth, of course, go ahead and use a weapon with a silencer. That's going to be huge. But I think the biggest one that people are overlooking when they are complaining about how difficult it is to stealth around their enemies is they're running around in a gigantic space suit. Sometimes it's a heavy armor one with metal clanking all over the place, right? Easy way to avoid that problem is just take your space suit off. Now, remember to put it back on, though, before you head back out into the harsh atmospheres of whatever planet you might be on. OK, this next one has a little bit of a spoiler attached to it. So if you have not played through about half of the main story quest yet and you're still trying to avoid spoilers, then you may want to click on the video that's popping up on the top right of the screen right now. That's going to be another fantastic video about Starfield that you can enjoy. For those of you that have played about halfway through the game and you're OK with hearing this little spoiler, then I'm going to continue in three, two, one. OK, so there's this one scene in the game that you're going to remember where one of the constellation members dies. 
and it might seem like it's totally random or it might seem like it's totally predetermined and neither of which is true. So the way that works is the two constellation members that you have the most affinity with will be chosen for the scenario that plays out. And that scenario is you get a call and you have to choose to go save one or you go choose to save one at the lodge on Jemison, right? So you're choosing between the eye and Jemison and you're making this choice based on who is at which location, whichever location you go to you will save the person that is there and whichever location you don't go to that person will die no matter what it's one of the two people you interacted with the most so if there's someone you really don't want to die when you're playing through the main story quest make sure that you get to that part of the story where someone dies before you accrue a bunch of affinity with one of your favorite cast members you might even decide to spend a lot of time with someone you don't like so that they're the person that dies instead of your favorite right as harsh as that sounds that's definitely a strategy that you can employ to make sure that you get to embark on the rest of this journey with all of your favorite characters so just letting you know that it's not totally random just letting you know that it is within your control who does and who does not die in that situation you know for better or worse it's in your hands you know you monster so do with that what you will all right guys if you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a like and subscribing for more starfield content if you have any other interesting tips that you think would be worth putting in future videos like this, please leave them down in the comments below. That's where I get most of my tips. Things that I didn't find myself a lot of times come from your amazing comments. So don't be shy. Leave them down in the comments below. And if you're listening to this, go ahead and look at those comments because there's a lot of gems in there. Soak them up, learn them and uh, upvote all your favorites. Massive shout out to my YouTube channel members. If you want to become a channel member, be sure to click the join button below for behind the scenes footage private discord channel and having your name pop up at the end of every video. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're not sure what to do next, maybe check out one of the amazing videos popping up on screen right now. See you in the next one.